Leadership is the ability to motivate and organize others around a common cause. This looks different for everyone, depending on their leadership style. Some use coaching to help drive motivation. Others take a hands-on approach, doing the work alongside their peers. Democratic leadership is a style where all members get to participate in decision-making processes. What's important is that there's no one way to be a leader. You just need to develop and practice your own style. My name is Amanda Signer. I am an Air Force veteran. I was in for six years and I was a military intelligence specialist in the Air Force. And I'm currently married to an active duty Army soldier who is in the Signal Corps. And I'm also an Air Force brat too. Leadership to me is kind of the concept of servant leadership and it's always serving first before thinking about yourself. My name is Christopher Carter. I served active duty Air Force for eight years. There was a definition of leadership that I took away from, from the Air Force and it was servant leadership. Um, a sergeant, for example, is literally to serve is the meaning of that word. And I think that that is what a leader is, is someone who is not afraid to do the work, to do the actions that they're, you know, speaking about and asking others to do. They need to be in the trenches for sure. My name is Angela Clay and I am a curriculum associate at iCivics. Prior to joining the iCivics team, I served in the United States Army for 10 years as a transportation officer. One time when I acted as a leader, honestly, um, I can remember when I was down the range in Afghanistan and my convoy had just got hit um, with an RPG rocket and that was my time as the leader to show and stand up for my soldiers. Um, I was scared as I don't know what, I am not gonna sit here and lie, I was terrified. There were so many things running through my mind and that's where I had to remember I probably wasn't the only one feeling scared. And I wasn't the only one that was questioning and doubting certain things. And if that was on my mind, that was probably on my soldier's mind. And then at that point, it was me pulling myself out of my selfish thoughts to then service my soldiers. Because we all want to get home you know, at the end of the day. And it wasn't just about me coming home. It was about all of us um, coming home. And so that was that moment of just being as strong as I possibly could for them. And then when we got out of it, you know, checking on them and making sure that it was they were okay. But then also at the same time, showing them my vulnerability in that moment too, is that, hey guys, like I was just as scared as you guys were. Like, I may be your leader, I may be your convoy commander, your lieutenant, but I was just as scared as you guys were. And being open enough to share that with them, um, they it allowed them to not just see me as their convoy commander, but it allowed them to see me as a person. Um, and that goes back to that building that relationship with them. At the end of the day, I wanted them to respect Angela and not Lieutenant Clay. That was way more important to me than anything else. The rank you had to respect, but it was me as a person that meant the world to me. How can young people be active leaders in their communities? Um, I think it definitely comes back to what I was saying earlier about seeking out those opportunities, trying to find those doors for um, for youth where they can participate in some kind of leadership capacity or even followership capacity because a lot of the times you know you might not be jettisoned into something where you're responsible um, 
Uh, but being a good follower can kind of give you a better understanding of what it takes to be a better leader. I believe young people can become actor, uh, active leaders in their community through really strong mentorship, right? So even in um, those process of them coming up, they still need mentors, they still need guidance. Um, and so it's looking at the kid who you can tell they're trying to do something and they just sometimes don't know necessarily how to do it. You don't write them off. You pull them under their wings and you provide that mentorship to that child because then you're going to raise up another leader that's going to see another kid that's looking like them that says, hey, I remember a time when someone took me under my, their wings and mentored me and now I want to give back. And that cycle continues and continues and continues. Um, and it's just a beautiful thing to see active leaders come up in our community through mentorship. As you think about your own experience, when is a time you served as a leader in your community? 